Hi everyone, I'm Yasha, and welcome to the 11th episode of Election Scoop. Today we'll be continuing our series on the party systems, continuing with what is so innovatively called the third party system. It's the first one to feature the two major parties that we know and love today, the Democrats and the Republicans. So we start off in 1854, as the Whig party was just falling to pieces. They only won four states out of 31 in the election of 1852, and controlled smaller and smaller slices of Congress as well. As the party was going down, some anti-slavery Whigs didn't want to go down with it. They met in Ripon, Wisconsin, and formed the Republican Party whose main goal was to oppose the introduction of slavery into the territories, as per the Kansas-Nebraska Act. The party quickly replaced the Whigs, and for a new party, performed very well. In the election of 1856, just two years after its founding, its candidate John Fremont obtained second place, right in front of know-nothing candidate, yes, that was the name of the party, Millard Fillmore, and behind the Democratic James Buchanan. Buchanan, in office, was a terrible governor, who did nothing and just sat back as the nation began its deadly civil war. All of this opened the door of opportunity for a certain person. Born in the Kentucky wilderness, his family immigrated to Illinois when he was a child. This young man couldn't do anything right. He was a failed businessman, rejected for the civil service, lost nominations to state legislature, House of Representatives, Senate, and even the Vice Presidency. He was the opposite of what you wanted in a candidate. He wasn't particularly handsome, he was too tall, and he had a huge wart on his face. His name was Abraham Lincoln. And this son of Kentucky farmers would change the history of the world more than any other leader of his time by far. I could go on and talk about Abe all day and all night, but we have a story to finish. After securing the Republican nomination, Lincoln defeated a group of pro-slavery candidates such as constitutional unionist John Bell and Democrats John Breckinridge and Stephen Douglas, who he actually beat for a Senate race six years earlier. The South, wanting to keep slavery, was not too happy at Lincoln's election, so they seceded. We all know the story of the Civil War and how Honest Abe freed the slaves. He also ushered in a new era of Republican domination the third party system that far outlasted Lincoln who was to be assassinated in 1865 while the system lingered around the 1890s. The system came at a pivotal turning point in US history. America, having kept the Union intact despite hardship, had shown itself and the world that America was here to stay. Cities grew rapidly as people moved closer together. Industrialization took root everywhere. Transportation and communication went through revolutions, and immigrants started coming over at increasing rates. Although America's status as a world power would not emerge until after the two world wars, much of the building of a centralized, economy-driven nation-state needed to become and sustain superpower status developed its legs during this period. The Republicans lost only two presidential elections, which were Democrat Grover Cleveland's two non-consecutive terms. On the campaign trail, there came out allegations that Cleveland had had an improper child with his mistress. Like many politicians do today, he could have thrown the blame, denied the allegations, or just stayed silent completely. But his motto was tell the truth. And he went out there and he admitted his crime. And he gave the young man the child support he needed to grow, and then he won the election, like the boss that he was. The system also saw the North-South divide of politics develop, as Republicans became non-existent in the South, and Democrats lost a stronghold on the North. And the system was more or less conservative, with most presidents, regardless of party, encouraging sound money, normalcy at home and abroad, and putting a hold to Lincoln's earlier activism. But the world changed, and starting in 1892, American politics would change with it. We'll be discussing that on another episode of The Party Systems. So thanks for watching, and remember, don't forget to vote.